Hello, my name is Chris and today I'd like to invite you to put the big stick down, take the boxing gloves off, step out of the ring and stop beating yourself up for that one setback, that one relapse, especially for that one mistake or unhelpful decision that you've made. We can make 99 really good decisions and yet we afford them nowhere near the amount of energy or attention that we afford that one unhelpful decision. If we're quitting smoking, we can make the decision that we're going to quit. We can make the helpful decision that we're going to research the best way to quit. We can make the helpful decision that we're going to start the quit. We can make all these helpful decisions and then we make one unhelpful decision to have a cigarette and absolutely beat ourselves up about it. God, that was stupid. God, therefore I am stupid. God, that was bad. Therefore I am bad. Therefore everything is bad and I may as well not even try. And eventually we catch ourselves beating ourselves up and we recognize how bad this makes us feel, that it's not actually helping us. It just makes us feel awful. And so to try and get us to stop beating ourselves up, we start beating ourselves up about beating ourselves up. And then we start beating ourselves up about beating ourselves up about beating ourselves up, <laughs> and so on. And it doesn't really get us anywhere other than making us feel pretty bad. So today I'd like to talk a little bit about what's going on when we're in this overly self-critical thinking and what I do to help myself ease out of that thinking and into a way into a mindset that is much more helpful and much more conducive to getting what I want out of life. Before I do that I would love to remind you that tomorrow Saturday April 24th 2021 is this month's live stream hangout. It takes place at 6 30 p.m UK time. For my friends in other countries, I always post a reminder a few hours in advance. That'll be in the Facebook group, Finding Freedom, and in the YouTube community thing. Um, just so that you know exactly you know, when I'll be live. And it, I've so much enjoyed the last couple of months of doing these live streams, getting to hang out with you and answer your questions and just chat with you. And I'm so very much looking forward to tomorrow's live stream, so I would love to see you there. For now though, let's get on with this subject of beating ourselves up, or rather not beating ourselves up, and not beating ourselves up about beating ourselves up. The first thing that I need to remember when my inner critic is being very loud is that it's actually coming from a good place. That inner critic is coming from that subconscious primitive part of my mind that is trying to help me, to protect me, and keep me safe from harm. You know, to, again to use the example of quitting smoking, I quit smoking and then I relapsed and started beating myself up about it. The voice that would be beating me up will be coming from a place that wants me, wants to try and motivate me to move away from the risk of let's be honest, nasty diseases and death. It wants me to move towards health and freedom because that's what's good for me. So this voice that beats me up actually has my best interests at heart. It's just that it goes about it all wrong. You know, yes, it might be true that I might get a short-term kick up the pants from going, God, Chris, that went really badly, let's do it again. But in the long term, if I am telling myself, God, Chris, you suck, and you are awful, and you are stupid. All that's going to do is demoralize me. Drive me maybe into depression or anxiety or just feeling crappy about myself, impacting my self-esteem, and making it so that I don't even want to try again. And when I recognize that this inner critic is coming from a good place it's much easier to act with compassion towards it you know I like to talk about practicing self-compassion but self-compassion doesn't just mean being compassionate to the parts of me that are nice and that I like 
It also means being compassionate to the parts of me that I don't like and that aren't so nice, including the inner critic. I keep using this word critic and it reminds me of like someone writing a bad review for a restaurant or a theatre performance. You know, my inner critic is not like that. It doesn't go, oh, you know, the souffle was rather overdone. My inner critic is an arsehole. <laughs> it is so mean to me. And yet it comes from a good place. And because of that, I can act with compassion towards it and actually stop beating myself up because of this. And stop beating myself up about beating myself up. I can actually be grateful and give thanks to this inner critic and say, I recognize inner critic that you are trying to help me. You're trying to get me towards happiness, health, freedom, whatever the case may be. And I appreciate your efforts, but this is not the most helpful way to do it. So you know what, you know what inner critic? I've got it from here. I'm gonna do the rest of this journey with kindness and compassion and a little bit of self-love. And when I'm compassionate towards this inner critic and when I recognize that it's only trying to help me, I can also recognize that the stories that it is telling me about what is going on aren't necessarily true. Just because I have a thought does not mean that I am obligated to believe it. Just because I have a thought or tell myself a story about a certain situation does not mean that that story is necessarily true. So I can stop believing these inaccurate, unhelpful stories and start paying attention to what is actually the true story about what is going on in my life. Again, let's use the example of quitting smoking. We start to quit smoking, we have a relapse, we beat ourselves up, oh God, this is too hard, I can't do it, I'm not strong enough, I'm this, I'm that, this situation is too much for me. None of which is true. It's far more likely to be the case that the real story is that we are learning something new. When we quit smoking, we are going through a learning process. We are learning not only how to quit smoking, but how to respond to life without cigarettes, which is something that some of us have not done for a very long time. And when we learn anything new, we occasionally make mistakes and we occasionally get things wrong. But learning to drive, we don't have our first driving lesson and are world-class drivers by the end of that one lesson. We might stall a million times, or like I did, I have to have the, drive, the instructor grab the wheel and drive us to safety. <laughs> We're learning to play the guitar. Nobody picks up the guitar for the first time in their lives and is instantly Jimi Hendrix. Doesn't happen. Some people are naturally better drivers, some people are naturally better guitarists, some people are naturally more capable of quitting smoking than others, but it doesn't mean that those of us who struggle and make mistakes are bad or untalented or can't do it. The actual story is that we are learning. And part of learning means it's okay to make mistakes. As long as we learn from those mistakes, you know, and try and get better so that our driving instructor doesn't have to save us from instant death. If it's been a while, you know, if it's been, okay, it's a year down the line since we quit smoking and then we have a relapse, still doesn't mean that we're bad. We start to tell ourselves a story, well, all that was for nothing, I've made no progress, I'm destined to be a smoker for the rest of my life. When the actual true story may be that there was something else going on. Maybe there was some underlying stress, or maybe, you know, even if we smoked in celebration of something, there's a lack of contentment or complacency or whatever it may be. There's probably something else going on that is very different from this make-believe story that our inner critic tells us. When we know that, we can stop 
beating ourselves up and accept the reality of the situation. We no longer have to attack ourselves for attacking ourselves. We just go, okay, well, that didn't go so well, but I am learning and I am being kind to my, every part of me is being kind to myself. My logical, rational, conscious brain and my subconscious primitive brain, which even though it can be a bit of an arsehole, actually has my best interests at heart. I could go on and on and on about this subject, but I'm really trying to make a shorter video, so let's see how this goes. Thank you so much for watching today. I really hope that this has been helpful, just giving you something to think about. I would love to see you at the live stream tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. UK time, Saturday, April 24th. The link where you can set a notification on where the stream will actually be is in the card above and the description below. Don't forget our Facebook group, facebook.com slash findingfreedom1, where there is this wonderful community of people at all stages of their quit process supporting one another. And of course, it wouldn't be a video if I didn't plug my book. It is called Quit Smoking and Be Happy, available in print and ebook form. If you already have the book, you enjoyed it, please consider heading over to Amazon and leaving a review. It would be incredibly, incredibly helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.